Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his great mercy, there's the first thing, God is great in mercy. If you wondered, is God merciful? The answer is, he is great in mercy. So Peter's heart feels the mercy and he bursts out, blessed are you, God, for your mercy is great who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope. And so the second reality that bursts out of his heart, having been perceived by his mind, is he caused me and these saints and you who are born of God, he caused you to be born again unto hope that is alive. Once you had no life and now you have life, which is hope indeed. And when he grips the fact and the fact grips him that he was born not of his own strength, but by God, he blesses God. Blessed is the God and Father who caused me to be born again. He caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. There's the third reality that he feels God raised Jesus from the dead and triumphed over death and opened the doorway into immortality so that my hope can be living forever and ever and ever. And he blesses God that God raised Jesus from the dead. He caused him to be born again, us to be born again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away. There's the fourth thing that makes him leap with blessing to God. If he fathered me, he's my father. If he begat me, he's my father. If he caused me to be born, he's my father. And children don't give inheritances to their father Fathers give inheritances to their children. We are the receivers. He's the giver. We have an inheritance now because we've been born into his family in heaven forever and ever. And when Peter sees that, when he feels that, he releases it and says, Blessed be God who gave me and promised me an inheritance. And finally, number five, an inheritance reserved or literally Kept in heaven for you. Who's keeping it? Who's keeping it for you? So that it won't be defiled. So that it won't perish. So that it won't fade. Who's keeping it? Who has that kind of power to keep your inheritance so that it is there, perfect, satisfying, forever and ever, and will never fade and never die and never perish? And the answer is God. And therefore, Peter feels that and he says, blessed be God. So here they are. God is great in mercy. God causes us to be born again to a living hope. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. God promises us an inheritance and God keeps that inheritance so that it will never perish or fade or be defiled in any way. And therefore, blessed be God. Blessed be God. So do you, do you, do you see where it's coming from? The five realities Glorious, infinitely valuable realities have been perceived by Peter's mind, felt in his heart, and now they are coming out in worship. Blessed be the God and Father. That's the meaning of worship. That's what we do here morning and evening. I am targeting your heart through your mind that your worship might be released through your mouth. 